All right, we're going to kick off today's event with Steve Kernute. He has been in EO for 18 years. He has bought and sold more than a dozen businesses, ranging from music publishing, sheet metal fabrication, mortgages, insurance, and even owned a chain of nine Ace Hardware stores. <clears throat> Hubris is when you fly too close to the sun. Steve will tell you how this showed up in his business life as he could, as he thinking he could do it all himself or he could control the situation. Hear his story of how this led to making decisions complicated instead of more simple. Join me in welcoming Steve Kernute, Fits of Hubris. Hubris. I keep trying to put an extra vowel in there. You shaking hands? Yeah. Hello, everybody. I, uh, when Mo said 18 years, it made me think that um, when I joined EO, my oldest son was three years old. And about two hours ago, I was able to log on virtually and uh, watch him give his senior thesis in college. It was a real treat and pretty cool. And uh, he and I think a few other of his housemates in Washington, D.C. are logged on today. So we got to see each other talk, which is pretty special and pretty cool. So. Um, Arrogance, I think, it seems to me is when one person thinks they're better than another person. Hubris, it seems to me, is when a person thinks they're a little bit better than they think they are. And I have been guilty in my entrepreneur entrepreneurial life and probably in other parts of my life of hubris, especially in my 20s and 30s. And I would say that I would have bouts of hubris, and then recover. It comes to us from the Greek story of Daedalus, who was trying to help his son escape from the island of Crete, and he made him some wings. And he told him not to fly too close to the sun, because if he did, the wax would melt. And uh, of course, Icarus did, and his hubris cost him his life. I... Um, my hubris showed up in ways that had to do with decision making. I always thought that I could think my way through it, any contingency. I thought that I could consider all possibilities. I always thought that I had the best idea, the best solution. And it caused enormous frustration for me and for the people around me. I think um, the best advice I never took came not in a lightning strike, like one day, where there's a musician who saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan and it changed their lives. It didn't happen to me. Um, it was a teacher or it was a, a business partner or it was a friend. It even came from my grandfather. And it was that uh, sometimes the most obvious things, the most simple things, are the best solutions. It's better to make a bunch of solutions and, or a bunch of uh, decisions that are 80% good than it is to make one decision that's 100% good if you can make those first ones really fast. So for me, I didn't get locked up by decision making. I wasn't paralyzed by the analysis that came with it. In fact, I, uh, I would say I'm a prolific decision maker. I'll, I'll make one right now. I, uh, I also uh, uh, am not risk averse. Uh, my hubris didn't have the effect on me like that. But what it did do is cause me to overcomplicate and over frustrate. It diluted my focus, it, it, it thinned my energy. It changed things fundamentally for me. When I was in college in North Carolina 30 years ago, I was a songwriter and a traveling musician, and I started my first business. It was a publishing company and a little record label. And I was trying to crack the code of how to get a major label deal. I thought of every complicated solution you can think of. I decided I could do my own merchandising, my own t-shirts, I could take my own photographs, I could learn graphic design, design my own album covers, I could start a side business with equipment and rent the sound back to the band. I could depreciate my van and my Winnebago. I did everything except the simple one, which was um, 
just be a better musician, a better songwriter, a better performer, maybe even a better person. By the time we finished our journey, eight years later, we were signed to Capitol Records in LA, and uh, all of my ball juggling and all of my hubris were so caustic that uh, we lost our record deal. It was uh, a sad thing for me at the time. It was a very big part of my life. And uh, there were other people hurt by it, some of them my best friends. It turns out that um, my kind of hubris has a heuristic answer. And it's got many names. One of the names is Occam's Razor, named after a, a Franciscan friar from the 13th or 14th century. But it has a lot of other iterations. Aristotle had a version of it. Uh, Ptolemy had a version of it. Newton had a version of it. It basically means that make your observations. And the simplest answers are usually the right ones. That razor, if you think about it, slices away the complicated. It slices away the unlikely. And what's left bare is the obvious and the more simple. Another way to think about the razor is it, it cuts or cleaves indecision from decision. That wasn't really my problem, but Occam's razor was finally a way that I was able to answer what I was going through. There are other names for it too. There was a, uh, a doctor at the University of Maryland in the mid-1900s, Theodore Woodward maybe, and he called it the zebra principle, and it's still taught in med schools. He was a, a med school professor, and he would tell his students when making a diagnosis, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. You don't always have to think about the most exotic diagnosis, the craziest disease, the most complicated solution. All you have to think about when you hear hooves is horses. Diagnose the patient, move on, make the decision. In business, it might be the first mover advantage, but you can think about it also like, uh, I could build three boat docks 80% well and get them completely leased before the next person might be able to build one really, really well. I was trapped in that loop for a long time. I was able to figure my way out of it. And the basic structure of it is pretty simple. There are three types of reasoning. And two of them were taught in college or in school, deductive and inductive. Deductive is top down, inductive is bottom up. But Occam's razor is different, it's abductive. In fact, abductive reasoning is the holy grail for artificial intelligence even. You can teach a computer to do the first two. If you can teach a computer to do the third, it's a big deal. A really simple example, um, you go into the parking garage, you have a blue car, you see your car's dented and there's some white paint. You don't start thinking about complicated logic, trying to determine all the possibilities you know, was it hit by a Scud missile? Did a warthog charge it? You look at it and go, I'm in a parking garage. My car was probably hit by another car. That's so simple, but it's taken to a scale of complicated problem solving. Some of the greatest thinkers of our age used a sort of imagery type version of abductive thinking. Everyone from Heisenberg to Tesla to Faraday and even Einstein thought in stories immediate recognition of complicated problems. And in business, that matters. It matters to move quickly. I hurt people because I didn't figure it out early enough. So now, my business is um, crisis management and restructuring, turnaround. At Tortola, we get involved with these complicated situations where other people have given up. And in the last 10 years, I've watched it happen Board of directors, owner, management, locked up. They can't make decisions. They're thinking about things that don't matter. Rather than making one decision and taking a week to make it perfect, you should make 10 decisions in one day and have them 80% perfect. Because when you're in trouble, 
or when there's a crisis, it's not getting better. It's usually getting worse fast. Put a tourniquet on now, save the limb or the body. Later you can figure out if you can save the limb. So it's amplified in my life. I'm 53 now. I spent most of my 20s and 30s um, in a series of overthinking. <laughs> and I hope I've spent the last 10 or 15 years a little closer to that. I know now that when I hear hooves, I think horses and not zebras. Good luck to you guys. Thank you.